Speech is a new fantasy football manager game that allows you to prove your football knowledge against other managers and win a share of up to £70,000 from the prize pool each week. Speech offers games from multiple leagues, including the Premier League, the Bundesliga and the Champions League. You can create a new lineup every match day so you can play any weeks that you want, meaning that you can pick up the game, go away for it for a couple of weeks if you choose, come back and still be in with a great chance to win money each and every week. There are paid pitches to play on but you can also play entirely for free once a match day kicks off you'll score points based on your player stats like goals assists tackles and stuff like that there are tons of statistical analysis available on individual players inside the app when you pick your team this is available to people in the uk age 18 plus and the link to download speech is in the description below I want to caveat this by saying I understand that some of the players that I'm going to mention we've got emotional attachments to and it's not going to be easy to envision a time where we move these guys on. But unfortunately, football is ruthless, football is relentless and father time doesn't wait for anybody. And when I speak about Naby Keita, I'm sure you've got mixed feelings already because I know I certainly do because I love Naby and there is no denying that he does offer us something that maybe your other midfielders don't have with perhaps the exception of Thiago. But I can't get away from the one thing that's at the back of your mind right now as well. And that is the Naby Keita injury situation. Naby, from my quick glance at this, has been a Liverpool player for about three and a half years right now. And he's already missed over one whole calendar year because of injuries. Just, just let that sink in for a second. So he's been a Liverpool player for about three and a half years. And he's already been out for over 365 days of that with injuries or COVID. COVID was a short one, to be fair, with injuries mainly. And I don't think that we can afford to carry a midfield that has an injury-prone Naby Keita, an ageing and injury-prone Thiago, and an ageing and injury-prone Jordan Henderson, or at least the ageing conversation around Jordan Henderson. We look at it on paper, and we start listing off the list of midfielders, and we think to ourselves, right, we're actually quite stacked in there. So we've got Fabinho. We've got Tyler Morton, we've got Curtis Jones, we've got Jordan Henderson, we've got Naby Keita, we've got James Milner, we've got Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. But when you start to actually dig into the numbers, how often are we able to really put out our strongest midfield trio? And what is our strongest midfield trio? For me, the ideal midfield for Liverpool Football Club would be Fabinho, Keita and Thiago. Ideally, if everybody's fit, that's what I'd love to see. And maybe you can throw in Harvey Elliott in there as well because the excitement of having him coming back and playing football for Liverpool is going to be something we look forward to. But what we can't do is go into another season with a deep midfield on paper, but when the practicalities of actually togging out each week, we have so many rolling injuries and so many players who are unavailable. But on Naby, there's a couple of things. One, the fee that we signed him for. It was a very clever way that Michael Edwards set about getting Naby from Leipzig when there was interest from the likes of Bayern Munich, uh, Barcelona and many others. So we signed him in advance basically and the fee was in and around 50 to 54 million quid I think. So getting him was, was clever. It was great bit of work by Michael Edwards and I can't tell you how excited I was waiting for Naby Keita to become a Liverpool player. But it felt like almost from the get-go alarm bells were ringing in that we weren't getting to see the Naby that we'd seen in Germany. We weren't getting to see the Naby that we were expecting to get. But we also got those glimpses when we did see him of why we went so hard to get this guy and what he was able to offer us. The ability to break a line, the ability to get in and around the, the centre-backs and create space for other people, the ability to score from midfield, which was something we were crying out for for the longest time. But all of that, in the context of our greater midfield, as I said, means for me, we're carrying too many luxury players. And by luxury, I mean basically himself and Thiago. I think we can only afford to carry one of them in the squad. And if you're looking to maybe recoup some money, probably more likely to get some money for Naby Keita than Thiago. But one thing that is important to point out here when we're talking about Naby Keita is, much like Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah, Bobby Firmino, uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, he also only has 18 months that I'm aware of remaining on his Liverpool contract, which means that if we let him go through to the summer, he's got one year to go and a big decision has to be made. Do we renew his contract knowing that he'll want probably a wage increase, knowing that his injury record has been a little bit sketchy and that perhaps we're taking a rather hefty chunk of money from the wage bill and investing it into a player who hasn't been able to prove his fitness in four years at the club? It's difficult, I know, 
And I would probably lean to the side of if the right offer became available. So Barcelona were rumoured to be interested in Naby Keita. If they were willing to put together a package or maybe even a player plus cash deal or something that interested the club, I wouldn't be against moving Naby Keita on. And I say that with a very heavy heart because I know what he's capable of. We see glimpses of him. And every time I think I'm done and every time I think I'm, I'm wanting us to cash in, I'll get a Naby Keita performance that makes me sit up and go, wow. That's why we're being patient with them. That's what we have available to us. But I'm also not naive enough to believe that FSG won't be looking to make radical decisions in the summer and remove some players off the wage bill who they don't feel are living up to their end of the bargain, whether it be because of injury, which is nobody's fault. But ultimately, we as a club bear the the issues from this as we move throughout a season when we hear the conversations about well we're not able to compete with Manchester City over the course of a season because we don't have the squad depth we don't have the squad depth for a variety of reasons one well we just can't afford to have the same depth of squad or same calibre and depth of squad as the likes of Manchester City or Chelsea but what we do have to do is to try and be clever and I don't feel that this attempt at being clever has paid off. So if Naby was available and you could get a transfer fee, and let's be honest, we're not recouping anywhere near. But one year left on his deal, we're not getting anywhere near the money we paid for him. So you'd have to take it on the chin that you're going to take a loss. And then you'd have to figure out how we fill out that spot in midfield. Because even though I've listed off eight, nine, ten midfielders, I and many others still believe that we haven't replaced Junior Wijnaldum And we need to replace Genie Wijnaldum. And yes, Harvey Elliott will get some of those minutes. And yes, maybe Tyler Morton or Curtis Jones will share around some of them. But what we don't have since we've moved Genie on is a a 60-game-a-season man, a a 50-game-a-season man, a bulletproof player, which Genie was. Now, whether you like Genie or not, because I know we divided the fan base at times, nobody can argue that the lad was bulletproof. And he was always, always chosen and available by Jurgen Klopp for the big games. I think we need another player like that in midfield. And if we have to maybe sacrifice a Naby Keita to do that, I'd make that decision if it was me. I'd love to know how you guys feel about this because I'm well aware it's a very sensitive subject and there are going to be some awkward conversations amongst us fans over the coming months because you know I'm already talking about Keita here, but I will be making more videos on this subject about Thiago about Jordan Henderson, about Alex Oakley Chamberlain, about James Milner, about Sadio Mane. So I, I know there's going to be some reactions to this video. People are going to go, hang on a minute here. What I'm basically trying to say is we need to put on the big boy pants. We need to understand that it's a ruthless business and the club need to make these difficult decisions, particularly when we know that we have five players that are running down into 18 months to go. Alex Oakley Chamberlain. Naby Keita, Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane and Bobby Firmino. And we all know of that list of five players where the club's priority lies for um, getting somebody tied down. And it is with Mohamed Salah. After that, I don't know what the preference is and I'm intrigued to find out. Look, let me know what you guys think about the Naby Keita situation and anything else that I've spoken about. Don't forget to drop a like on the video as well. And if you haven't subscribed to Anfield Agenda, please do. And don't forget to check out our Twitch channel as well. I am currently on my holidays when you guys will be watching this. So again, there'll be more videos to come in this series. Thank you guys for watching. Have a lovely day. Up the reds.